Good morning. Welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 4th of October and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 7th of October. And the last four days have been a significant contrast to the way markets performed in September. September was a positive month for global stock markets. In the space of four days, we pretty much undone all of September's gains as volatility has increased in the manner of Hurricane Lorenzo heading the uh, south coast of England and most of the UK. Um, we've seen significant downdrafts, significant loss of confidence amongst investors as to the global growth story and the next move for central banks as well as future direction of economic data. As we can see from this FTSE 100 chart, this UK 100 chart, We've seen some big declines over the course of the past three days. We saw a little bit of a rebound towards the end of Thursday and we are now slightly higher on the day for Friday. But nonetheless, FTSE 100 is on course to post its worst weekly performance since 2016. And there are a number of factors behind these sudden declines in equity markets. October always tends to be a fairly choppy month for stocks and it doesn't look as if this month will be any different. This particular October will be any different. Um, so what have we got to look forward to? Well, obviously markets are concerned at the moment about the Trump impeachment, President Trump impeachment. Um, there was the WTO ruling um, that found in the favour of the United States and basically gave the US the green light to impose $7.5 billion of tariffs on a range of EU goods. Now, while that may all by itself, all by itself, not be a particularly high number, coming as it does at the time that the US-China trade talks are due to restart on the 10th of October next week in Washington, it's just another downward pull on future economic growth expectations. Um, we've also seen a weakening of economic data throughout the course of the week. There's been widespread concern that the weakness that we've seen for all of this year in the manufacturing sector might start to bleed into the services sector and we have seen increasing evidence of that with the data that we've seen thus far this week. Certainly in Italian services PMIs, French services PMIs, Spanish, UK and German PMIs have all been on the weaker side raising concerns that the European economy, the UK economy could well slide into a technical recession as we head in to the end of the year. US data has also been a little bit weaker but before we get too concerned about that the US economy is still performing at around about 2% GDP at an annualized 2% of GDP. So I think the concern that investors have about a US slowdown are slightly overstated at this point in time. That's not to say that the internals of the ISM reports that we saw earlier this week couldn't well ripple out into weaker payrolls reports going forward, but we aren't quite there yet. And when you actually look at the prospects of a Fed rate cut later this month, the, the bar to that still remains quite high given the splits amongst the voting members of the FOMC. Um, now, will this afternoon's payrolls report change any of that narrative around the possibility of a Fed rate cut at the end of the month? Possibly. We could be getting, we've got a series of Fed speakers speaking later today um, after today's payrolls report and the tone of their comments could influence how markets perceive the possibility of a Fed rate cut this month, later this month, over the course of the next few days. In particular, I'll be paying attention to Eric Rosengren of the Boston Fed. He has been much more hawkish when it comes to um, the possibility of future Fed rate cuts. He's dissented to the last two. So I think him, um, he and Esther George, any comments that they make over the course of the next few weeks need to be monitored closely in terms of a monetary policy shift as we look towards um, whether or not the Fed will be able to coalesce around a consensus position on a rate cut. So US payrolls later today 
expectations are for around about 145,000, which I've been told apparently is the weakest consensus forecast in the last three years. Well, even if it is, um, payroll's growth on a month-on-month -month basis this year is trending at 170, and the weakest payrolls report this year was around about 32,000, and that was back in February when the US government shut down. And we have also seen a 75,000 print this year as well, and the sky didn't fall in. So the US economy is still growing. US pay growth is still around about 3.2, 3.3%, and the unemployment rate is around about 3.7%. If wages comes in weaker, then that could be a concern that maybe the US labour market is starting to weaken. Also, if the unemployment rate starts to edge up, that could also be another sign that US unemployment, uh, the US economy is starting to weaken. Certainly, the internals of the ISM have shown that employment growth is slowing. Now, that could manifest itself in today's payrolls report, or it could take another two, th two or three months to shake out. We will know more at the end of today. As we look ahead to next week, we've got a couple of items to keep an eye out for, or actually three key items I've got my eye on. Obviously the latest Fed minutes. The, the most recent Fed decision turned out to be a rather contentious one. A rate cut was widely expected, but the level of dissent <laughs> in terms of the divisions on the committee was not. We got dissents from the hawkish as well as the dovish side. So how those dissents start to coalesce back to the middle ground of a rate cut will be particularly um, important in the context of the overall debate. So I certainly think in the context of how we go going forward, it's going to be very, very, I think that the Fed minutes could well be a little bit stale given some of the data that we've seen recently. We've also got the latest China trade data for September. Now, a lot of the numbers we've seen out of Asia recently have been a little bit weak. We've seen weak export growth from Japan. We've seen weak export growth out of South Korea. So I'll be paying particular attention to the export numbers out of China for September. Also, the imports data for China has been worrying as well. Every month this year, we've seen big declines in imports, with one particular exception, which was um, which was in which, which which was in around about April, which saw a rise of four percent. So, is internal demand in China continuing to remain weak? On the 10th of October, U.S.-China trade talks restart. So. That's at the time of writing. We could well find that they could get delayed. But at the moment, Chinese officials, including Chinese Vice Premier Li He, are due to lead a Chinese delegation to Washington to restart those trade talks. Now, earlier this year, talks broke down when they were, in the words of Stephen Mnookin, 90% done. So the big question for me is whether or not they pick these talks up from when they were 90% done or whether they start from scratch. We've also got some important data out of the UK, manufacturing production for August. We certainly know from the PMIs that the manufacturing sector is certainly um, in contraction territory. I think the big question is whether or not um, we see a little bit of a pickup as we head towards that particular deadline. But we are talking about August here. So we could, we could get a weak reading on the back of um, maintenance shutdowns and what have you. So again, important not to read too much into one piece of data given that manufacturing only makes up 12% of the UK economy. So let's look at some of the key chart points that I'm particularly going to be looking out for over the course of the next week or so. And there have been some significant ones. We've seen some big rebounds of some very key levels. In the case of the FTSE 100, we saw a nice rebound off the 7000 level. Also coincides with the February lows. So Keep an, keep an eye on the, on the January highs here and here. So you've got this January peak here, beginning of uh, in the 11th of January, and then we've got another peak on the 21st of January. When we, phone, when we broke above 7,000, we pushed quite a bit higher. So 7,000 is a very key level. This looks potentially like it could be a bit of a hammer on the daily charts. If we're able to hold on to that 7,000 level, we could start to wedge back up. But certainly I think in terms of the overall direction of travel, momentum is starting to fade. It's a similar sort of story on the DAX, bounced off the 200 day moving average earlier this week. And you'll find that that's going to be a common theme um, in terms of the charts that I've been looking at over the course of the past um, few days. 
bounced off the 200 day moving average. We need to really recover back above 12,000, 12,100, but we're still in the downtrend that we've been in since those peaks all the way back in July. We haven't been able to sustain a move back above this downtrend line here. So again, the direction of travel for stock markets looks a little bit on the soft side in terms of the overall trend that we've been in since the middle of the summer. Um, if we do break below the 200 day moving average, then obviously this area of support around about 11,400 is likely to be the less target. What's more concerning is the fact the 50 day moving average is starting to lose momentum and is starting to roll over towards the 200 day moving average. And if that crosses, we could well see a death cross over the course of the next few days and weeks. S&P 500, similar sort of story. Again, we've rebounded off the 200 day moving average this week managed to hold above it a nice long shadow on the downside there every time we've seen one of them over the course of the past few months we've seen a decent rebound but again um, the 50 day moving average is starting to show signs of rolling over we could get a rebound around about back to 29.40 or 29.50 29.50-60 is a key level for me. If the rebound that we, we're getting at the moment can sustain and move higher, then we could, get a, we could get at least a little bit of a respite from the selling that we've seen over the course of the past few days. And it's a similar sort of story for the US 30 as well. Again, if we look at the 200-day moving average, we're able to hold above it and we're able to rally back. So in summary there's some very key levels that we've got to keep an eye out for over the course of the next week or so. 200 day moving average on the US 30, the S&P 500 and the DAX and the 7000 level on the FTSE. Obviously we also have Brexit. Brexit's always on the menu when it comes to talking about the markets and certainly the recovery that we've seen in the pound over the course of the past few days would appear to suggest that there's rising optimism that even if we don't get a deal in the course of the next few days we'll get an extension but certainly in the context of the moves that we've seen over the past three or four days you can see these long shadows either size of the open and the close will tell you that sterling volatility is going to be significantly high over the course of the next few days in fact over the next few weeks until we get some clarity as to whether or not the UK leaves without a deal on the 31st of October or whether or not there is an extension if there's an extension then you can expect the cable to get a decent pop back through 124.30 back towards the highs that we saw in the middle of September certainly I think there does appear to be some decent support in the mid 122s for the time being in terms of other things that I'm looking out for over the course of the next week or so, we've got some, uh, some reports from the airlines, EasyJet's Q4 numbers on the 8th of October. We've also got International um, Consolidated Airlines or British Airways latest, um, latest um, traffic stats on the Monday. And we've also got Delta Airlines Q3 numbers on the 10th of October. Um, otherwise, that's it for this week. Once again, thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.